Well, I think as a teacher, first of all, you have to you have to think outside the box. It's constantly changing like any other career, whether it be in the medical field. Teaching constantly changes. So when our school kind of began our STEM process, we knew that we were going to have to start layering learning. I know you talk about the music teacher being involved with that, but Marla, she just was able to connect everything. Uh, kids love her. Uh, again, she's one of uh, our teacher leaders here at our school, and people look up to her. And I think that's one reason why I became STEM certified is because of her energy. We met our partners through Purdue through some professional learning. We felt like the, the best way we could become um, more knowledgeable about the area was to have professional learning opportunities. So we took a class that was, was um, actually sponsored by Farm Bureau and it was at the Purdue Farm Plant. And uh, we made some friends there very quickly um, that were very passionate and excited about the possibility of, of partnering with a STEM school. They spent several hours out there um, put their hands on the line, got to work a little bit, um, introduced them around, and they were just absolutely amazed. So in talking with several of the managers, picked out several problems and let's said, you know, let's start kind of easy. We don't want to dive down too deep until we can kind of see if this, this relationship is even going to work. This is something that we can do. So we started in what we call rehang. Well, that there is an efficiency in place with all of that, and it takes Lots of people, and you imagine standing on those lines for eight hours a day, um, you get tired. And we run into the same problems. You can't keep people, nobody wants to work over there. H how do we make all this work? So we thought, that's going to be the first place. Let let's just start there and see what we can, we can do. And the teachers dived down into it, and then they started coming back. And they would ask um, questions. They would send a video back to the plant since they couldn't come. We've got questions. How do we do this? What does this look like? The company and the, and the representatives from the company were so um, accessible and helpful in explaining to our kids what the processes were and connecting it to their classroom standards um, and helping us create lessons in the classroom um, that were real world authentic situations and STEM problems that they had to think through and solve. We made thinkers out of real problems. They had a ball with it. And then at the end, um, Right after they got done with testing, they put a presentation together. They took their six top ideas. They dressed up. We brought our plant managers in here. And those guys actually presented, just like what we would do when we do a big continuous improvement process plan. And we have a presentation at the end that shows what worked, what didn't work, what do we think they can do to fix it. I mean, and these kids come up, everything from extending their brakes, giving them more brakes. Two, they redesigned their gloves. I mean, they, they got down it too. They redesigned a shackle. And, and it was just the, the process and the, the motivation that these kids got out of it. The first meeting we had, we had a student say, I think this could be your problem. And the first meeting that we had with Purdue, I think that was the selling point right there. Because it's amazing what those brains think. Um, we're very cut and dry and once we've done something one way we do it the same way over and over and over and over um, and we don't think along the lines of how can I do this quicker more efficient um, and these kids are they are shortcut kids um, and so honestly they're looking for shortcuts for everything and so when you give them a problem their brains think in 15 different directions that we never think first of all you just think you know we're title one we're 100 percent free and reduced lunch and it's just uh, it's just you know, you get emotional about it, but you just think the, the passion that people like Marla have, that the teachers here at our school have, that, you know, no matter where kids come from, the, uh, you know, the, the possibilities of what these kids can do will, will never be defined by a zip code, you know, but by the potential that they have. And again, it's that teacher that, that sparks that interest. And so uh, we're just real proud of our kids. You know, we're proud of uh, our teachers here. And it just makes you just uh, feel really proud that, you know, it happens here at Northside Elementary School. Yeah, just a great story, and Marla and her students definitely have a lot to be proud of.